Good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, we're going to start with a, a brief opening statement from Coach. I will come around uh, for questions. Just raise your hand. We'll find you and try to get you as many questions as we can in the time allotted. Uh, starting off, we're looking forward to playing Clemson. Uh, we understand what type of game this is. You're talking about a team that's won the conference in the last six years in, in the ACC Atlantic and the ACC Coastal in the championship game. A uh, ton of athletes, have a lot of respect for Coach, Coach Swing, I mean Dabo and, and, and his players. I mean, they're a class act and we're looking forward to the game on Friday. Uh, also, a uh, shout out, we're looking forward to the uh, Floyd Little weekend. Uh, he means a lot to this program. He was, he's the first person that I allowed to speak to the team. Uh, and I can still remember that talk. I can still remember that speech. And uh, it was very moving. And uh, I have nothing but uh, fond thoughts of him uh, and his wife, Deborah. So we're looking forward to that as well. I know there's going to be uh, some questions on you know decisions and all that stuff. And I get that this is what you guys do. But uh, please understand that when it comes to decisions on football games, uh, I'm going to always go with my players. And I always believe that they can get things done. And sometimes I ask them, and sometimes they give me responses, and sometimes that filters into my decisions, and sometimes it doesn't. But we're going to always work on the positive, and I'm going to always back my guys. So with that, uh, let's open it up to questions. You know, one of the things one of the things that we want to be able to do traditionally, if you were going to take uh, the analytics of a football game, and one person stops the run and the other team is able to run, traditionally, the team that's going to do that is is going to win. If when that doesn't happen, that means the other team has to throw for amazing numbers and not turn the ball over. And if they can cross those boxes without turn with turnovers they may have a chance for a win. I think back to uh, our win over Clemson uh, when I first got here. And we, we rushed OK, but we hit them with some passes, some big time passes. And we were able to uh, keep them from running the ball super efficient, efficiently. And that was the game where they lost their quarterback with uh, Slayton, with an injury with Slayton hitting them earlier in the, in the, in the game. So that's traditionally what happens in football games. It's if you control the physical part of it, you should come out on top most of the time. Going back to Mark and I'll start in front row here. Hey coach, you know, your team, like you said, that after game Saturday has been playing well the last three games. Um, the last two games though, they they haven't had the result at the end of the game. And how do you uh, keep them from getting totally frustrated at that and, and keep you know, convince them that they keep playing like this? I don't think it's convinced. I think it's a belief. I really do. They, they know when they play bad, and they know when they play good. And it's in games like the last three games that we've played, you don't ha they understand how close the game is. They understand the, the inches of things. And uh, it doesn't come down to one play, but one young man wish they could make that play. One person wishes they could make this play. They understand how close they are. And uh, this, is, this is character building time. You know, it's the tough times when you grow. And, it, and I'll tell you what, we're sharpening ourselves up for something special. That's the way I look at it, in that you've got a lot of guys that have been in a lot of tight games. And if we continue to do this down the road, I really believe that we're going to start seeing the benefits of coming out on top. Going front to uh, Stephen, then Brent. Can you go back through the game? Is, is there anything you wish you would have done differently from a decision-making standpoint? You know, I think the big thing when decisions in history and decisions at the present time is that you take the information and you go with it. When you look back in history, you can always say it was either this or it was that. I believed in my players. I'm fine with every decision I made. Did, did anything that you saw change your processes? You know, I'm, like a result is a result. Just because a result happens doesn't mean the decision was wrong. But you might look back on something thinking it was 55-45, but maybe it was 35-65, right? Do you still feel like based on the information you had, that's, that's what you would do again? I already answered the question. You reiterated the question a second time. I already responded to it. Okay. Right. 
Coach, I, I just want to go back to the two-point conversion. Uh, ideally, how does that go? Even in the, the speed of a game, there's a lot happening. Do they know what the decision is right away? When, we, situation. Here's the deal. We were going to go for one because we play at, we're at home, and traditionally you play for one. The way we scored the touchdown, I felt like it was a huge momentum swing. And I'm like, you know what? Let's end this thing right now and go for two. Now, in doing that, you freeze the guys. If you watch what we do, the same mechanics every time it's either one or two. You freeze the guys and you tell them, okay, we're going to go for two. We missed getting that ball off by two seconds. The celebration was a long celebration with Tucker, uh, getting the guys lined up and getting them geared up and get them ready to go, and there was not a great sense of urgency out there. Now, if they'd have known it beforehand, it'd have been a lot more. But in doing that, we didn't get it off, and then we backed it up and we kicked for the one. Tommy and the Coach, you've had three games now, come down to the wire in a row. Do you find yourself in that 24 to 40 No, I, that goes through my head in every game. I've got plays from the 80s that are still in my head, and I'm not joking. I mean, there's, there's times where guys, things will pop up, and I'm like, we can't do that. That cost me a championship in 1998. We're not going to do that. We're not making that mistake again. So, yeah, I've got a bunch of plays in my head, and they pop up all the time. But these aren't more than any other week, you would say? They're always the same when you don't win. You think about the losses a lot more than you think about the plays and the wins. That's just how I'm wired. Dean and Alex. Coach, do you have any relationship with Dabo? Is there anything that you admire about this coach? Yeah, there's a, me and Dabo get along great. You know, our, our first names start with the same letter. You know, kind of ends with the same letter too, I think. So uh, we get along good. We have, uh, you know, the last time we beat him, he came in and spoke to the team, you know, which I thought was really cool. So uh, our relationship's good. Anything you admire about him as coach? Yeah, I think he does it the right way. I, th I, I like his values. I like what his people, his kids stand for. I like what comes out of, you can see he does a good job raising young men because I like what, when they do their interviews, what comes out of their mouths. I think they're a family down there. I always appreciate programs like that. I could not hear you behind the mask. Okay, so just going off of what Tommy said, um, these losses have been tight. If they, these losses that you could have won, I guess, like how do you get over that hump? How do I get over that? How does the team get over that, yeah. Oh, I probably don't get over it. I, we don't, we're, coaches are, we don't forget stuff. Uh, I, I wouldn't say I'd get over it. No, but I mean in terms of, like, how do you change that result? Like, how do you get over, because these, you keep playing and you score more than the other opponent than you normally win. I mean, we got to keep doing what we're doing. First of all, the read option has been with us since we've been here. From the, since 2012, we started with the read option. I started with the read option back in 2008, 2009 with Baylor. So it, that's not exactly true. It depends on what you're calling a read option. Okay, but we read different people and we decide whether it's going to be a run or a pass based off of what they're doing on a football field. That's what an RPO is. But I think that. Uh, between a tailback and a quarterback that they have to have a feel for each other when it comes to that. That mesh point is very, very delicate, whether I'm giving you the ball to run or whether I'm taking the ball from me to either run or do something else with it. And there's a point where those two guys, whether it's uh, Garrett or Tucker or DeVito and Cooper, they really have to have a fantastic feel for each other with their body language and whether they quarterback wants them to clamp down on that ball or whether that quarterback wants that ball just to smooth go straight across the belly button and for them to operate with something out the back door. It's something that we work a lot on and it's basically almost a wishbone quarterback type option thing 
even though we're not in that type of offense and we're not in that type of formation. Right. And then in a little bit of a different direction, in terms of the linebacking core, I think it's fair to say that that group's made a fair, a good amount of progress between last year and this year. I don't know if you want to say that that group's made the most progress, but what have you seen out of, out of the linebacking core? I think the linebackers have done an amazing job, you know, and um, Marlo Wax, uh, Stephon Thompson, uh, Jeff Canton. I'm going to miss somebody. I haven't missed. I haven't missed the key guy yet. I, you know, it, this is going to get announced coming up. But Mikael Jones just got voted defensive captain for the for the football team, so he'll be our defensive captain for the rest of the year. With the uh, the rest of the captains being announced this week on individual days, so they're an amazing group. And Mikael's the leader of those guys, and uh, you know. They're part of the spokes that make that wheel go over there. And uh, we're excited that not only are they uh, having an excellent year, but all of them are coming back. And then if I could just ask one more thing, halfway through, um, halfway through the season, you know, what kinds of, I guess, what are your um, focal points of emphasis in terms of areas you guys need to work on? Well, I think there's a, there's a lot of things that we need to work on, but there's a lot of things that we're doing well as well. I mean, we're, we're scoring points at a high rate, higher than we've traditionally done. Uh, we've gone against some opponents that have moved the ball a little bit better than traditionally in the first three weeks, but we're sitting three and three. I know 0 and two in the ACC, but I just don't feel like it's 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 not like last year. It's like we can go out and we can beat anybody at any time. We just got to go out there and keep chopping wood. Quick one here, and then Steven. Going off of Roshan's first question, Garrett Schrader said he wants to be a pass first guy, throw the ball every time he can. How do you make him feel comfortable running the ball 30 times a game, designed to give you run? Some of those runs aren't designed. Some of them are him taking off. Okay, we haven't designed 30 runs for him to go. So he's making those decisions. All quarterbacks want to th throw the ball. All receivers want to catch the ball in every snap, and all running backs want to run the ball in every snap. The really cool guys are the offensive linemen. They just do what the heck they're told to do. So we're going to try to throw the ball. We are always going to try to throw the ball. We need to be balanced as an offense. We'll always work towards that. But until you get there, you need to do some things that are working. What about the way you guys scored that touchdown at the end of the Wake Forest game made you decide to go for two? The, just watching the way that uh, Tucker ran that ball and then how that guy came across at the five-yard line and he could have took a, uh, you know, he could have jumped, he could have did something, but it was the, he just ran right through. He took his thigh and ran right through that guy. It was like I was watching old tape. And I'm like, when guys are running like that and they're giving that kind of effort and they don't, they're, they're not worrying about their body, it, it, it's, it was electric. Sure. You know what I mean? And, and this kind of goes hand in hand, but I asked you before the Florida State game how you were going to try and approach defenses that tried to stop the run, right? That sold out to stop mm -hmm. Garrett and Sean. And you said, basically, maybe we can run uphill. You kind of done that up the last couple of weeks. What kind of confidence does that give you that like the plan is, is viable, right? To lean on those guys and run, try and run the ball as much as possible. I, yeah. <sighs> This is weird. So, Stephen, you like halfway gave me a compliment, and I could like co-sign it. But it's but 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 no. This no. This is what I'll say. I think we've been throwing. I think we've been throwing the ball better in those games too. And when, since we're throwing the ball, but if you look at the numbers, we've been throwing the ball better, better. And because we're throwing it better, they need to loosen up a little bit more, which is allowing us to run the ball more. And the better we're we're able to throw it, the more looser it should get for the run. And it's difficult, okay, it's difficult. But that's what makes it so much fun. Well, Mark, in the back corner there. Coach, you started out by saying some nice things about Clemson, but uh, this is not, doesn't look like the same Clemson that we've seen. What, what's wrong with Clemson? Wow. I'll tell you what, I went to the media day. Did anybody raise your hand if you went to media day? Their quarterback was bigger then uh, let me get this right. He was bigger than Josh Black. <laughs> I mean, they've got they've got well, they got about 150 stars over there. I mean, we they're the top ranked recruiting class all the time. We can't touch them. How come we can't recruit a a five star and a four star over here? And now you're saying that they're no good. 
That's, that's the Clemson Tigers over there, man. Come on. Sheesh. <laughs> You mean they don't have the number one a first round draft pick quarterback and a first round draft pick tailback that's about to come in the draft and they're both going to get drafted in the first round this year at this moment? OK, I'll agree with that. <laughs> I think they're freshmen. So <laughs> and they got like one more year before they come out or two more years before they come out. That's Clemson over there. OK, everybody knows what that represents. That corner and then Tom. Coach, just wanted to ask about Courtney Jackson. He's, you know, we, I, I tease, I, in a good way, I tease Courtney, but he's, he's doing things after he catches the ball. You know, there's, there's three things we want our wide receivers to do, and I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go media blast and tell you what they are. But one of them, besides catching the ball, okay, I'll tell you the second one is. I won't tell you the third one. The second one is, okay, now you've caught the ball, what are you going to do with it? You know, because you have to turn it from a receiver into a running back or into a receiver, into an ex explosive player. We're, we're glad that you caught the ball. Now just don't fall down. You know, now do something with it and, and keep it secure. Courtney is starting to make plays after he catches the ball. The thing that jumps out to me is the Florida State pass that we threw him. He was coming across the field in what we call a drive cut, and he was inches away from stepping out and going about 55, 60 yards, where a guy barely got his ankle. The play was coming towards our sideline. And I want to say it was early in the game. And since then, you can just see that his confidence has been growing and growing and growing. And uh, I mean, he is, he has to continue to grow, but he, he may grow into something that's really, really special. But we've got to wait and see. But he's, He's on the right track. He's making people notice. And, uh, and that's why he's going to get more opportunities. We've got time for a couple more. Uh, we'll start with Tommy and then go to Nate in front. You know, you use the analogy of taking the training wheels off the kid's bike in the beginning of the season with a you know, fresh crop of, of guys. Was, was it the same feeling sending Kalen Ellis out there in the midseason? And what do you think of them? And, and oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Could you see Kalen on a on a bike when we took the training wheels off of it? And you know how and you've met Kalen? He's a big guy. He's bigger than that. You're being nice. Um, I'll tell you what was really cool. His mom and dad came in from Hawaii. And uh, they're here for both games. They're here for this game and the uh, and and the game that's coming up Friday. And when they made the tickets and when they flew in, they had no clue that they were going to see their son on the football field. They merely thought that they were going to see their son on the sidelines and they were going to spend time with him. And for those two individuals to fly from the islands to get here and not know what was going on, and then to have their son roll out there first, you know, next to uh, Josh Iloa and, 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 Ru and Ruby, his, his mom, and, and her, I mean, it was just unbelievable to have that many young people in that lineup versus that defense of super seniors and to have some of the success that we had. I mean, even in a loss, it was enlightening. It was encouraging. And uh, once again, it just shows you that, you know, you never know. You know, I think back to Matthew Bergeron when the one young man decided to leave and, and Matthew stepped up and we're like, okay, here we go. Here's another freshman. But it was like, okay, he didn't do that bad the first game. And then by game three, it was like, this guy should have been playing a lot more a lot sooner. And you know, no different than Sean Tucker. Sometimes that stuff just happens. And when it happens, hopefully you're on the right side and not the wrong side of it. I hope to have him at the game, but I can't promise you anything. It's like dumb and dumber. We got a chance. We got a chance. If, if you are, if you are down two of your interior guys, you know, they're down two of their interior guys, and they're two interior guys. So it makes it even. Like, how do you view that as a watch? Like, does it change how you feel about how you might? 
Clemson has the best personnel in the conference. Clemson always has the best personnel in the conference. You, you, it's never going to – if it's going to change, it's going to take a while. But right now they have the best personnel in the conference, Coastal and Atlantic. Last two questions about Brad and Mitchell Calvin. Coach, going back to the situation where you accepted the penalty, did that present a unique thing to you? It's not often you look at a college kicker and say, oh, yeah, he's going to make that from 51 yards. Does that just speak to his, the respect you have for him in that situation? Or he, he just demonstrated that he was ice. You know, was, you know, I'm just the guy just looks like he's going to – hasn't he already won a Lugosa? Has he won one? Not yet? I'm not sure. He's been nominated. <laughs> he's really good. Watching the film again, I mean, hindsight being 2020, can you rush more than three on that play maybe? I mean, we could – you know, watch this. We can flip it around. Watch this. Florida State, we should have rushed three and stayed back with eight, and the guy wouldn't have scrambled down the sideline. Everybody would have been drop zone. Then you flip it back around to Wake Forest. Oh, my God. You, you can second guess all the time. You know what I mean? But the really cool thing about decisions is that when a decision has to be made, you have to make one, and you have to own it. Okay? You don't get to sit back and on Monday decide whether it was right or wrong and, and do, you know, what some of you guys do. We don't get that opportunity. And I understand you guys have to do that stuff. But we needed a decision at that point, at that time. Last question to Calvin. Coach, can you speak on the abuse play of Trevor Payne? It seems like he's going to break one soon. You, you've noticed something. He is, he is um, I'm with you on that. We, we got to do a better job of holding people up. And I don't think we're, we've been doing that great of a job. And he's still making the first guy miss. He's accelerating through. And once again, he, he reminds me of Courtney with that. There's times where guys are barely getting him and we're not getting a lot of, we're not helping him a lot. And as a true freshman, I'm sitting here going back, he's got some stuff to him. And he's very, I'm, I'm not saying this because you brought this up. You, you're hitting a spot. He's very, very courageous. If the way he's progressing, if he continues to grow like that, I could see him being an NFL guy doing that stuff because he, he does the right stuff. He's got some steps to him. And, you know, one of the things that NFL, I'll, I'll give you a little treat. One of the things that uh, pro scouts look for in, in punt returners is that there's a certain step that all the good ones do. And most coaches will t will coach kids out of doing it. But the natural ones, you can coach them out of doing it, but they'll do it anyway. And, and believe it or not, the step is, is actually backing up to make a guy miss. Most people catch the ball and they go forward, and that's what a coach wants. Catch the ball and go forward, that's what a coach wants. But if you look at the really elite punt returners, they'll catch, and, they'll, and all of a sudden they'll just, it's just a jump back, and whew, guys will fly by and they'll take off and hit scenes. And I've already seen them do that. And uh, you hit the spot. I think he is going to be exceptional, and I think he might have a chance to do that stuff in the league, especially with him starting so young here. We got to do a better job holding people up for him. Thank you. Yeah, that was a good pickup by you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you.